Hi, in this video, we'll be taking a look at how you can dockerize a Django application. So we'll be building Django application, then we'll be writing a Docker file to dockerize the Django application, and then we'll be basically uh, converting that into the Docker image and then publishing it to Docker Hub. And we'll see how you can actually use Docker to dockerize the entire Django application and also then use it to deploy. So without wasting any further time, let's get started. In this particular video, we're going to be dockerizing our Django project. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll install Python. Now you can install Python using python.org in case you haven't actually installed Python before. And once you install it, you can use it the command prompt to see what's the version. In my case, I have the version 3.9.7. And I'll just exit out of this. All right, uh, now we'll go to VS Code and actually get started with the create. The first thing that we'll do is we'll create our uh, Django project. The first thing we'll go ahead and do is we'll just create a virtual environment. In case you want to do it, you can just install pip install virtual env. And in order to set up virtual env, we'll just use basically the virtual env command line uh, tool. And we'll, let's say we'll call our virtual env venv. Now we'll just go ahead and add, uh, to in order to use this, we'll say source pnv bin and activate and this will basically set up our new virtual environment which is known as vnb now what we'll do is we'll basically install the python package to be able to basically install uh, like you know django project and for that we are going to be using the python package of django admin which basically scaffolds and provides you a ready to use a starter uh, project you not having to actually tinker around and actually change any settings or create files from scratch for a django project so we are going to be installing the dependency so it's going to be python install django admin we'll just wait for it to install instead of our virtual environment and we'll quickly go ahead and do that and apart from that, let's also just install Django. So we'll just do pip install Django to basically ensure that our virtual environment has this particular package. Now let's go ahead and clear this off and use the Django admin command. And the first thing is to use the start project, which will basically help us to create the project. And finally, we'll give it the name. So let's say we give it the name Django Docker. So this is the name of our project and very quickly as you can see that our project has been created now in order to basically uh, run this right so it has successfully been created we'll quickly navigate into this particular project directory so we'll just go uh, see django and now uh, basically what we can do is we can actually run this particular server so we can use python manage.py and then run server now, of course, as you can see that right now it quit because uh, we have to run some migrations. So first we'll just go ahead and complete this migration and then actually run this. So let's go ahead and do this and now run our server. So our server will basically run on this port that is port number 8000 and we can test it out once. And if we just run this now, we should be able to see that our uh, application is actually running right now. So it's the first step. Now, once we actually set up our Python file, the next thing that we can actually do is uh, create our requirements.txt file because before actually creating the Docker image, we have to create a requirements.txt so that whenever we are dockerizing our application, we can install all those required uh, dependencies inside of our Docker uh, file as well. So what we'll do is we'll basically just close this. And what we'll do is we'll basically say pip freeze and we'll use minus l and then we'll say requirements requirements dot txt basically the minus l is used to actually create just for uh to like just local installs i'll just go ahead and do this and as you can see that we get our requirements dot txt with all the requisite packages that python packages that are there inside of our local system so Basically, it redirects uh, our output to the file of requirements.txt. So these are all the list of ones. Now, in order to get started with Docker, uh, in case you haven't installed it before, you can just go to uh, docker.com and uh, you can find, uh, so basically in docker.com, you can download Docker either for Windows, Linux or Mac. In case, if in my case, I'm running Mac, so you can see over here that uh, I basically have this service over here uh, that is running. Right, the Docker desktop is running. 
so now what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and clear this and uh, first what we'll do is we'll just create a dot, uh, docker ignore file this is useful in case you don't want certain files to actually go into your docker especially things like let's say Sathya or git so we can just say it and like let's say if you were using a node project it could be in the node modules if you don't want those to be pushed as well to your docker file so once we like you know it's very similar to how like you know it's a dot git ignore file uh, it's very similar to that now what we'll do is we'll basically create our uh, docker file and uh, basically uh, this is what we're going to be using and we'll just actually go ahead and uh, create this outside of our system all right yeah so let's go ahead and yeah define this over here all right now uh, basically we'll create our docker file and we'll start defining the content of our docker file now of course the first one is uh, from which will enable us to set that what should be the base image we are going to be using in this case python 3 it's a stable version of python you can provide like let's say python 3.9 3.10 as well let's just use python 3 for now because it's uh, like you know, it's ready for a production environment and it's like can be used with a more fine grained version now apart from this uh, the next thing that we'll define is environment now let's say if you uh, basically contain certain environment you can basically what you can do is that you can set uh, like you no know, specific environment variables with a key and uh, essentially in case if you are setting a particular value to a non key ensures that your python output is actually sent straight to the terminal right without getting buffered first so what we can see is that we can see that our environment is python let's say buffered and uh, this will be equal to one now the next thing that we'll say is that we'll set our working directory so our work directory is let's say app and the next thing that we'll do is we'll basically use the copy command to copy over our requirements.txt file so let's say this requirements.txt and we'll just keep it at the current app that's at the current location now we'll run we'll use the run command to basically do all the installation so basically pip install all the requirements that we have uh, all the packages that we have we don't need to actually use multiple quotes you can say requirements.txt all right and once we actually have done this let's just copy over all of this and now let's define our uh, basically the port on which we have to expose this and in this case let's say so the one that we had before uh, let's say that we expose this to port 5000 and over here let's paste this all right perfect now uh, basically we also define a command this basically what uh, the command will do is so before this like you know exp uh, basically we have set the expose as 5000 that means the command is to inform like docker that uh, we'll be using basically the port uh, 5000 as our external node and now we are going to be defining the command now basically in this case what we are defining is that basically this will kind of be this default command whenever we run the container based on this image and this uh, will basically replace the command that if we have previously used and like you know it will be easier for deployment so let's say that uh, over here we define first of all python and then we can define manage.py and then we can say run server and we can define it to run on uh, let's say localhost that's 0 0.0.0.0, .0, .0, .0. And we'll basically run it on uh, port 5000. And if we see over here, right, uh, earlier was running on 8000. So let's just run it on 5000 this time, or basically 8000 over here. So basically, uh, this is where we're going to be running it. So we'll just define this over here now. All right. Now, once we actually gone ahead and like you know created our Docker file. Uh, we can also actually create like let's say our docker compose file in case like you know we, uh, if you want to add more number of services to this particular file so we'll just go ahead and create our docker uh, compose.yaml file so let's go ahead and do that docker compose.yaml file it should be good enough and uh, over here we can basically define and populate so the first thing that we can define is the version of our uh, docker compose file now what exactly is version is uh, basically like you know it denotes the version so we can say it's like let's say 3.9 now we'll define the services so the services like you know in this case will be just a single service and we'll just call it django and over here we'll define our image 
and of course like before creation of an image what we'll do is uh, that we'll actually go ahead and build our docker file so over here for now we'll just go ahead and like you know keep this as it is and what we'll do is we'll basically do a docker build and basically uh, like you know before we do this we're going to be using a docker build to create our image right so we'll we are going to be calling it like let's say minus t we'll give it a name and we'll say docker django and let's say dot. and first let's go ahead and actually create this image over here as you can see that right now it's creating the image by using the docker build command so you can create an image using the docker build command and once we have successfully uh, built this image we should be able to then load it okay so let's just quickly see it says that requirements.txt was not found uh, let's just quickly see if oh actually it is an error in the spelling so I'll just quickly go ahead and change this and now it should work. We'll just go ahead and use this command to build our Docker image. It says not found. Let's just quickly check uh, requirements.txt. Alright, let's just quickly, oh yeah, actually this as well. Alright, now it should work. Now uh, we should be able to run this and now as you can see that it has started to install all the necessary dependencies. First of course it's uh, like installing the base image which is uh, the python 3 and then uh, what it will do is it will like you know uh, basically install all the other dependencies and then it will create our docker image. So just waiting for it to first uh, like you know install the base image which is like you know, our python uh, base image that we have defined from python that's going to be our base image and then all the other necessary in uh, installations will be made while we wait for this of course what we can do is we can basically create our docker uh, compose file so of course we'll add the image link later and till then we'll also define our build so over here uh, we we'll define our build and build of course right now we can just do as dot and then we can define our ports so the ports of course right now as we defined is basically 5000 so we can set the port over here and define it as let's say 5000 and then 8000 so we'll just define our uh, docker compose yaml file over here basically we are defining the ports that we want to actually publish and the build uh, like you know uh, is where basically the path where we'll be building our image and uh, of course uh, like you know in the image uh, we'll basically go ahead and create it uh, now of course in case uh, your docker image uh, does not is is not uh, there locally usually if you are running the docker compose command basically creates uh, the docker image or, or basically the image itself uh, automatically in our case we have just created that before uh, defining it inside but uh, let's go ahead and actually see how this looks once uh, we have successfully uh, built our entire uh, docker image uh, of course uh, like I mean, it's, it's slightly larger image since we are using uh, python so we just wait for our entire uh, like an you know, application to build. but uh, we'll just wait for this to complete and then we'll come back so now basically our docker image has successfully been created and uh, we can actually also test out like you know the uh, docker compose as well and of course in this case uh, we'll just go ahead and see what's the name of our image so if i just see docker ps of course right now we don't have any specific one uh, running but we can see over here that like you know the image that we have created let's just take a look and actually the name of our image should be somewhere over here so if i just quickly take a look and we can also check out our docker desktop so we can take a look at the dashboard to see what are the list of uh, ones that are created so we'll just take a look at our docker desktop just wait for the docker desktop to load once and we can see over there basically what all different images have been created so click on the dashboard and then take a look at our okay so we basically created this one which is i think it's this one docker sample oh no actually let's just take a look or we, we can basically sort it by the creation time origin all right so this should be the one that we can take a look i think it should be this one so yeah docker sample so we can take this 
over here and uh, we can basically run this as well if you want for now just use it in our docker compose app and we'll define it over here within the image so we'll just go ahead and define it over here and we'll go ahead and save this and then basically we will run the docker compose command to essentially uh, run this so we can go ahead and uh, like you know run the docker compose uh, command as well so docker compose up and then build so we're giving it the build option to in case like you know of course you don't have to recreate the image uh, if it's not already available of course in our case it's, uh, already available. So we just use docker compose up and we should be able to run this we just uh, run this once uh, the docker compose app of course in our case we don't need to give it the force because we already have uh, created the docker file uh, basically the docker image and now we're just running the docker compose app uh, as well and in case everything runs fine uh, we should be able to see over here that uh, the first thing that's creating is the network which is the django docker default and then it's going to be running the or creating django docker one container and as you can see like now it has started to create this and we should uh, like you know see this so it has created the container now it's attaching to the container and let's see if it successfully runs or not and of course we can see uh, like you know what all containers are actively running right now so let's just wait for it to open up and see like if you're able to get that so let's see just uh, waiting for it to attach and then we will be able to see if it runs correctly or not and while this is doing it uh, let's also just check if we have any uh, currently running containers so we can just use the docker ps command to see the list of currently running containers so let's go ahead and see and take a look at docker ps and we'll just run the command docker ps currently running containers so let's just wait uh, all right so we'll just run the docker ps command we'll just run the docker ps command and see if this runs or not let's go ahead and see if uh, this runs so as you can see like you know basically our app is running on port 5000 if i take a look at docker ps should be able to see uh, what it's running so uh, what all con active containers are running so if I just create docker ps if I run this you can see that there is currently one uh, container that is running just wait for it to show up so as you can see that it's running one container right now if I go ahead and uh, see this particular entry point we hear that it's listening to port 5000 so if we go ahead and run port 5000 once let's go ahead and do that so we'll just wait for it to load so as you can see that it is running successfully so we'll just go ahead and run uh, the 8000 one so it, as you can see like it's running successfully over here uh, because we have done the port forwarding so yeah i mean that's how we have basically created this uh, particular image um, of course uh, as we did in previous session uh, you can also like you know go ahead and build this uh, to be hosted on uh, docker uh, basically to be for this to be hosted somewhere else as well in this case like you know it could be to push this and uh, to the docker and you can put it from there and for that case you can check out uh, the video on setting up of docker or basically dockerizing the nodejs uh, image or no nodejs application and of course uh, in the next upcoming videos we'll be sharing uh, basically to dockerize project that is uh, Merns. So actually, if you uh, deploy, let's say, a, like you know, a Django-based project, how you can actually do that with the also setting up of GUnicorn and setting up of like you know the proxies and servers. So those kind of videos are coming up. So stay tuned for those uh, videos as well. With that in mind, thank you so much for watching today's video.